this is for sure tight end U. Uh, we've had a you know a long a long line of tight ends come through this university, and uh, you know it feels good to be a part of a part of that fraternity. You know this process and, and going into the NFL, I mean it's truly really a dream come true. If you're lower, he's in the parking lot. When you talk about five star talent, the key's got he's got five star talent, five star ability. To show people that um, this is how we play and to show that we don't back down from anybody. You know, just simply being really, really confident and then cutting it loose and playing super fast so that he can be his very best. Um, we have this we have this board in our room that says feared, hated, and respected, and that's kind of how we we try and play um, play the game, you know. I've had the pleasure of working with uh, Coach Bell for the last three years, and he's really, you know, he played the position here. This is his alma mater. He's got two degrees from this school, so he takes great pride in it. He's been our recruiting coordinator, and we've worked together very closely during that period of time. And uh, he's got a really good background. He's, he's uh, coached at a number of different places prior to coming to Iowa, and this is really where he wants to be. And, and uh, I'm really happy and proud uh, that he has the opportunity to work with the guys because he's knowledgeable, he's passionate, he's organized, and he's always looking to improve. And uh, I, I think those traits, along with you know, his relationship skills that he has with the players, are, are going to be a huge asset as he uh, uh, works through spring ball and into the fall. Um, being able to work with him for the past three years, I've learned so much. Um, and not necessarily about the X's and O's, but you know, just how to treat people. Um, how to care for people, not giving up on kids. Those things are important. You know, every kid deserves a coach that believes in them. And I, and I, I took that from Reese Morgan because um, they all want to be coached. They all want to be disciplined, uh, but they want to know that you care about them first and foremost. And, and that, that's a big impression that Reese left on me. Um, he's a consummate professional, uh, extremely organized, extremely detailed in what he did. And, and those are things that I am um, picking up on today as I you know, take over his role. Uh, you know, I'm no longer Robin. I'm I'm Batman now. So it's a uh, it's a different role for me. But he left a left a lasting impression on me. Boom! Right there! Right there! Keep going! If you're lower, he's in the parking lot. You know what I mean? If you're lower, he's in the parking lot. Jesus Christ! He steps up in the pocket. Hit. He's drilled as he released the football by A.J. Epinesa. With him coming back, obviously, after having uh, that, you know, really good sophomore year, he's a kid that has got unique ability. You know, you talk about five-star talent, the key's got, he's got five-star talent, five-star ability. Um, but, you know, the thing that makes it such a good fit here and a good match for us is the kid's attitude. He's as humble as humble could be. Um, you know, there's an article written about him every week. Every all the fans are, you know, have these high and lofty expectations. But as a kid, he stays so ground. He stays so grounded. You know, blocks out the noise. Doesn't get too high. Doesn't get caught up in those things because, uh, you know, I'm always reminding him. And he's team, we teammates. You're only as good as your last play. Okay. Period. You're only as good as your last play. So, you know, before you get caught up in those things that don't matter, uh, let's let's take care of today's work today. He had to learn how to go hard. He had to learn how to go hard every play. And that's with every high school kid. They think that they're good enough. They think that going hard is, is good enough. Well, going hard here at Iowa, that's called Monday. And Tuesday, you're going to be expected to do the same thing. And Wednesday, you're going to be expected to do the same thing. So he had a learning curve in that, in that regard. But when he does go, it's pretty special. Here's the draw handoff to Bonner, and he's going nowhere. And the ball's out. The ball's picked up. Going to be a touchdown, Iowa. A.J. Epinesa. So on this play, um, Chauncey did a really good job of getting off his block and getting over there to make a tackle and he tried to hold him up and bring him down and I was able to come in and I saw the ball and I took a swipe at it and I was able to uh, pick it up and take it to the house. We, uh, we practice that drill every day, the uh, fumble recovery drill. Having all my family there, um, all my siblings, my, my mom, my dad and all my friends from home it was just, it was awesome to be able to uh, experience this with them and to play uh, at such a high level this game. 
or it's easy to play well whenever your teammates are doing good too. A lot of credit goes to them for helping me play the way I do. So on this play, we're, I knew they were going to throw the ball through uh, the formation, formation they had up, but um, this guy that I was going against is pretty good. He was a big, strong guy, long arms. I've been trying to do a couple power moves on him with my length, but his arms were able to reach me. So I went for a speed rush this time and I caught him off guard. And just like every day, routine, flip the hips and then run to the upfield shoulder of the quarterback and uh, get the ball out and give the offense the ball again. But I do a lot of study on the uh, offensive tackles pass set and how their feet are, how many kick steps they take. Like the amount of steps this guy took was very irregular for him. It wasn't something he did. He, he's a leaner, so when I tried to bull rush him, he would be leaning on me. And that's one thing I would look for in all the other games. Um, do they lean? Because if they're big leaners, then you can get them with a swipe or a stab club to convince them that you're going with the power move. But you come with a speed move and uh, get their hands down and they're off balance because they're leaning so much. Everyone has the collective goal of wanting to win a Big Ten championship and to be a championship level team and just to be the best team we can be. Um, but I think for some personal goals is um, just just to be as good a player as I can be, to really be always be where I'm supposed to be, and to always um, to, to be a leader, to to set an example, to show people that um, this is how we play, and to show that we don't back down from anybody, and that um, we're here to win every single Saturday. Right there, Kyle. Yeah. Ain't false starter. Rhythm. Rhythm. Right <laughs> there, keep coming, bring it! Yeah. Hey! Right idea. Yeah. That was so much, that was better than before. You brought him in, didn't come back out. Good job. It was better. You said knock him they down. Keep, they keep catching me like this, like that, with their fingertips. I was one of those players that came far, far away, you know, overseas. You know, I'll, I'm probably the farthest kid that played for, for Iowa back then. I'm from American Samoa, um, down in the South Pacific. It's closer to Hawaii, about five hour flights from Hawaii. Um, I, I mean, I'm using my, my culture through my kids because that's how I was brought up. You know, most of these kids up in the mainland, you know, um, they don't know how uh, blessing they are to have what they have, nice houses, you know, um, cars and stuff like that. We grew up with nothing. You know, I want to make sure um, my kids appreciate everything they do in life, um, what they have in life, opportunities, stuff like that don't come very often. AJ was always a... Um, Hard-working kid. He's a good kid. Um, very active, you know, um, non-stop um, kid when he was young. I played a lot of sports. I played soccer when I was real young. I played baseball, football. I ran track. I didn't throw till I was in high school. Uh, my first time dunking the basketball was in middle school, uh, seventh grade. It was an in-game, and uh, uh, we were running a, a half-court press, and I was at the top of the press, and. Um, I was always reaching for the ball, and uh, I got lucky and they didn't call me on a foul on one, and I was wide open on the fast break, and I uh, went down and I, I, I took a chance and dunked it. That was my first one, and uh, it was pretty awesome. Uh, during the summer, um, I, um, I started with my daughter, AJ, and um, now my son, Eric, and then even now is my son, Jose. You know, um, summertime, we, I make a do a little bit of workout with you know with my kids. You know, we run, we run the streets of uh, Clint Carbon, Edwardsville. There's a park there in, in Clint Carbon, Minot Park. Um, we go over there. There's a nice, about 40, 50 yard uh, hill. So we run those hills. One of the the days we flip some tires in my backyard. We have some um, 300 pound or 400 pound or 500 pound uh, tires in the back, and then try to create obstacles for, for my kids and their friends. Work hard during the off season, it creates a lot of good results for them. And it's, 
in, uh, during the season. So by the time they get to the coaches, these guys are already prepared for it. Um, it's just go out there and don't let anybody stop you. Um, I feel like if I have the mentality that the man in front of me can't block me, then I feel like I'll be successful. I've put in a lot of work with all the other guys. I mean, we've put in a lot of work as a defensive line and as a defense. And I know that everyone will be in their spot and uh, I'm gonna be in my spot. And when it's time to make plays, we gotta make plays. Just because you show up to practice and you go to meetings don't mean you're getting better. That just means you're checking them off the, you know, you drive that. That is a great, you drive that. Just because you show up in the weight room every day don't mean you're getting bigger, faster, stronger. You drive that, okay? I go in that weight room every day, still fat, okay? Because I ain't doing nothing, all right? That's, that's how you got to look at it. You, exactly. you see me in there, I'm in there hitting it, man. I'm in there hitting it. So, but you drive that. Coach said it. The effort was good. I thought guys were flying around. I didn't see. I had to watch the tape, check for the lows. But the effort was good. Mental mistakes. Use this tape right here. Everybody else, we get a D-line on three. <laughs> Way to compete today. D-line on three. One, two, three. D-line. D-line. Quick, quick, Tristan. Settle in. <laughs> Inside on. Hey, separate on the near point. Way to change it up, 7 4. That'll baby. Hey, I like the line, and you're still inside out. This was eighth grade when I wrote this. Um, our English teacher, we all, we all wrote him, and then we got him back at graduation. Dear Tristan, I hope that you are 6'5 or taller. By this time, I hope that you remember your goal of playing college football and then going further. I really hope that you still do all the sports that I do now. If you still do track and definitely doing shot put, you better have broken the high school or Drake Relay's record. It would be amazing if you had big college offers for football, and in football we won a state title a couple times. Well, that's all. Tristan Wirfs. He wrote it to himself on what his what he wanted his accomplishments to be at the end of high school and it and it talks about how big he wants to be and <laughs> what state titles he wanted to win and it was it was crazy if you look at the letter it almost every single thing on there is exactly what he did and you know hopefully you'll play at a division two or higher school and you know it was it was I had no idea that he had written it and I didn't even realize he was thinking about those things and it was pretty awesome. So we're really fortunate to have someone like Tristan Wirth choose to you know, extend his football career at the University of Iowa. We're talking about a guy who was a state champion high school wrestler, a guy that also was a state champion you know, shot putter, you know, and, and as well as a great football player. But he comes walking in the door, you know, a fully grown, you know, six foot five, 315 pound guy. So I came, I came in a big kid, you know, I came in at 317, I think. So I didn't, you know, I wasn't one of those, one of those players that was on like the gaining list. You had, you had to, you know, gain a lot of weight. I hadn't even like scratched the surface on what I was really capable of like weight room wise or anything. The strength and conditioning program here is just, it's on another level. I mean, you know, coming to Coach Doyle, like he knows what to do with your body. Like it's just, it's something else. You know, we got our, we got our weight room records um, down in the hallway downstairs and walking past it every day. So there's, there's three guys up there, Scherf, um, Gallery. I think actually Scherf has two of the, I think he has the the squat and the hang clean record and gallery's got the bench and, you know walking past the hang clean record every day it was always in the back of my mind and um and so you know i wanted to be up there with those guys those are two pretty incredible guys um my time finally came and you know my teammates were there pushing me like crazy i mean they were just screaming and, and hyping me up and i was able to get it and I, it, was, it was a pretty incredible feeling you know finally put my name up there with those two guys
You know, I'd like to see him do is take that weight room feat, you know, 450 pounds for four reps and transition that to where, you know, he gets a read on a, on a defensive lineman and he's able to snap and be explosive, you know, with his backside pad and knee all in line and he just takes a guy for a ride. You know, and that has to be part of um, an understanding conceptually, you know, in order to play fast. But that's also got to be a mentality that I'm the baddest guy out here. And I think that's the next step for Tristan is, you know, just simply being really, really confident and then cutting it loose and playing super fast so that he can be his very best. Strength conditioning is a big, uh, big foundation block of our program, always has been. And he excels in the weight room, uh, what he does. And there, uh, some, you know, can't be taught. He's got uh, just a, a phenomenal explosiveness to him. It uh, makes him a little bit unique that way. Uh, what I'm excited about as a coach is we're really seeing that transfer out to the football field now. Stop the penetrator. Nice job, you two. That's the way. Good job in there, Cole. Hey, I love it. Hip to hip. What was it? Stay with him! Oh, I get you. Get you. So you guys going into summer knowing what you physically got to improve on, right? And then what can we detail football-wise? And in fall camp, we're rocking and rolling. Some of you guys have to establish, okay, what your role could be. All right, whose job is it to grow the role? Yours. It's your own, all right? We're going to define those things come August 18th, and then you got a chance to grow it again, but we got to be gas on it. I think we're doing a good job, all right? Have a good day today. Go get it done. Hawks on three. One, two, three. Hawks. To his right, throws into the end zone. Caught. Touchdown. Dallas Clark. Touchdown, Iowa. Open. Caught. Touchdown, Iowa. What, what a, a beautiful play. catch by Scott Chandler. Into the end zone. Caught. Touchdown. Brandon Myers, what a wide open, that's Moyaki. he's going to go to the end zone, it's going to be a touchdown, Iowa, caught, touchdown, how in the world did C.J. Fedorowicz get to it, it's caught, touchdown, touchdown, Iowa, George Kittle has his second on the day. It's, a, it's an NFL development place, and me coming to high school, I was like 6'2", 190 pounds, 180 pounds, so I definitely needed all the development that I could get, and uh, this was definitely the best place for me. You know, so it goes from being a fifth round draft pick to a, to a Pro Bowl player, in very short time and just had a phenomenal year at the 49ers. I mean, I don't want to toot my own horn here, but like, cause I set the, like the tight end record at the Niners, I set a couple different things. Um, you know, led the league in Yak, which was, uh, that's one of my favorite accomplishments. Um, and then this, the, like the single season record, I honestly didn't even think about any of that stuff until they actually happened. I just go out there and I play football because I love it. Yeah, I mean, George is a, a, a guy who he, he, you know, he was a mentor of mine when I was I was really, really young. I mean, he kind of took me under under his wing, taught me the ropes and, and taught me how how to be an Iowa football player, how to how to how to be hard nosed, you know, how to how to do things right. This is for sure tight end you. Uh, we've had a you know a long a long lot of tight ends come through this university, and uh, you know it feels good to be a part of a part of that fraternity. I'm pretty sure the first time I saw Noah and TJ, um, I mean Noah obviously just kind of stands out at you because he is he's just an athletic freak. Everything he does, the second he touches the field, he's like all right, well he's faster, he's taller, he has great hands, he makes plays like. This guy's going to be an absolute stud, um, whether it's college or NFL. He's, he's just going to make his name for himself. And then, and TJ, I mean, he's kind of the same for me. He's a guy that I remember I saw him uh, like seven on seven in the summer, making plays. And then, uh, it was something on scout team. He would literally just crush guys on scout team. And Coach Woods, our tight end coach at the time, would pull up clips of him like, "Hey, TJ, this was a great catch." And like, you never really watched scout film, but uh, he showed us that stuff, and you, you really knew right then. You're like, "Wow, these both these guys are going to be absolutely insane." And, um, I did say to myself once that summer, I was like, you know, I'm kind of glad that I'll be out of here because these guys are both going to start next year. So, uh, I mean, that's a kudos to them. They, they, they're just both ballers. Yeah, you know, it's really rare, and uh, history will bear this out. But right now, there's there's strong talk that both uh, players will be drafted in the first round. If, if, in fact, that does happen, it'll be the first time it's ever happened uh, uh, in the NFL history. So that would be unique in itself. So you get two guys that are mismatches in their own right in very different ways. Uh, but the thing they have in common is they're, they're just really good football players and I think wherever they end up they're going to make some of these teams better. And, uh, 
that's all we can hope for is that, you know, obviously we expect them to produce as they go in the NFL. That's going to be their job, but uh, we hope that guys coming out of our program are going to be people um, that NFL franchises want in their locker room. And I think these are two guys that are going to make an immediate impact on the locker room wherever they end up. Um, you know, you just want to, you know, you want to stack up against the best and you want to see what you can do against the best. So I think, you know, this process and, and going into the NFL, I mean, it's truly really a dream come true. I'm feeling pretty good. You know, it's always been a dream to go into the NFL and, you know, kind of having, you know, having that opportunity to, you know, take, take hold of that and, you know, finally get into the NFL is going to be something that's pretty special. So I'm definitely looking forward to it. I'm super excited. Uh, I'm super excited to represent the University of Iowa and, and be here on the red carpet. So. Yeah, man, it's been amazing. It's been, you know, being through everything in my career, um, getting to this point, uh, a lot of highs, a lot of lows. So, it's been, you know, it's a great thing to be here and I'm very excited. Uh, you know, just, just hearing my name called and, and being able to go up on that stage and, and uh, you know, being able to play football again. I'm most looking forward to finding what team I'm going to. Um, you know, that's going to be very important. So. Yeah, I mean, so Coach Elway called me on the phone and, uh, you know, he let me know that, you know, I was going to be a Denver Bronco and, uh, you know, it was a great moment. You know, I went and hugged my mom first, um, you know, hugged my dad and then hugged the rest of my family. So it was a super special moment for me. It was amazing. You know, it was an honor. Um, you know, I love the, you know, love the Denver Broncos. I have a couple teammates, former teammates on the team. So it meant a lot, uh, you know, them calling me and uh, making that call to pick me. an awesome feeling. I mean, uh, being able to be here surrounded by friends and family, um, you know, being able to go to such a great organization, um, I'm just I'm just really looking forward to it. No, sir, they did not say that, you know, I was a starter. Um, I know that coming in as a tight end, I'm going to have to work for my role. I'm going to have to work. I'm going to have to play special teams. I'm going to have to do all that and do what the coach is asking me. So, um, you know, it's coming in as a rookie and you're, you're starting all over. So, um, you know, I know that they have great tight ends there and, uh, you know, it's all we, we have to put the work in. So um, I'm definitely looking forward to that. And, uh, you know, I know nothing's going to be given to me. It was the best uh, three years of my life. I mean, it really was. I mean, it's uh, it, it, the University of Iowa has set me up to, to be in this position. And, uh, you know, I, I'm forever grateful. Oh, yeah, Iowa's definitely a tight end. Are you kidding me? Two, two tight ends picked in the top 20? Come on. Love it. <laughs>